Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. Also, I don't know why I'm waving. It just felt like I needed to do that. I have an awful garbage, filthy mouth, so viewer discretion is advised. And if you're not into that shit or weird stuff in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. Why, well, hello, my little chicken cutlets. We have another fun size Friday, and this edition is dedicated to indie brands. <laughs> I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes today, some really fucking cool ones that I cannot wait to tell you about. We're gonna talk about the Diversa Collection from Odin's Eye, the Greed Palette from Mira Beauty, and that goddamn pickle palette from Sugar Drizzle Polish. And I say goddamn pickles because I hate pickles, okay? Pickles are disgusting. Fight me in the comments, I don't care. Pickles are disgusting. Anyway, let's talk about Odin's Eye first. If you've been living under a rock, Odin's Eye did a massive collaboration with three wonderful YouTubers. And this is the Diversa Collection Ooh. The first palette is in partnership with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. The Giant Wolves eyeshadow palette has 12 shadows, 7 mattes, 4 shimmers, and 1 multi-chrome. Then we have the second palette in collaboration with Judy. The Red Dragon is also another 12 pan palette with 8 mattes, 3 shimmers, and 1 multi-chrome. And last but certainly not least, we have the Fantastic Tina, also known as the Fancy Face here on YouTube, and this is the Hummingbird palette. In this 12 pan palette, there are 5 mattes, 4 shimmers, 2 metallics, and 1 multi-chrome. So full disclosure, this was actually sent to me in PR. Tina reached out to me and said, hey bitch, what's your address? And I was like, here bitch, here's my address. And lo and behold, this showed up at my door. Didn't know shit about it. And I was like, what the fuck? This is amazing. And I lost my mind. <laughs> If you are not familiar with Odin's Eye, bitch, they are a lovely brand from Sweden that comes out with probably some of the most unique color stories and just packaging I have ever seen in my life. They are truly fucking one of a kind. It's funny because, you know, Kaleidos has amazing packages as well, so I always kind of think of Kaleidos, I think of more of like space agey, slutty. <laughs> And when I think of Odin's Eye, I think of like my childhood in terms of like fairy tales and just how beautiful these palettes are designed, especially since they look like tiny little books. They're so fucking cute. If you've never tried any of their eyeshadow palettes, I don't know what you've been doing, but you need to try them. They are some of the best formula I have ever tried. Every palette that I've owned from them has always been just so goddamn amazing. And I actually just recently talked about them in my basic bitch video. However, they do make a silver that is just so goddamn good. Anyway, I always get excited for their releases because I feel like each palette just gets better and better. And they also make bomb ass highlighters and blushes as well. Each palette retails for about $33. And they also come with these beautiful scarves. This is a net. Look how pretty these are. It kind of almost makes me want to buy a Birkin bag, like if that's fucking possible. So I can just like roll the scarves up and put it on the handles. Uh-huh. In my mind, oh, I make Birkin money, bitch. <laughs> uh, hmm. Love that for me. These are so pretty and they're really beautiful quality too. So when you do purchase the palette, you do get a beautiful scarf to come along with it. They're absolutely gorgeous. So again, when I get my Birkin bag, like when I'm changing through the seasons, like I'm just gonna cycle through the scarves. It's gonna be great. Anyway, so all these palettes look pretty much the same as their last release. Freya, I think, I think that's how I'm supposed to pronounce it. I think I called it Frasia, like Frasier. <laughs> I think it's Freya. I should be doing my own research on this, but listen, it's, early in the morning. Mama don't got time for that. These palettes have a similar style to that collection, except they're a little bit thinner and a little bit longer because the palettes in that collection, the Freya collection, they're double-sided, so they're a little bit of a thicker milkshake. So these ones are a little bit thinner because it's only one palette. That said, these little palettes are absolute works of art. They're just so pretty. I really, when I finally get to move the fuck out of here, I want to put all these on a shelf because I just want them to look like little books because I love the binding. I just love the whole construction of it. It's just so fucking cute. I love it. Each palette, as well as looking at them together, is just so cohesive. I would not change one fucking thing. I think they're all perfect. I think all three of them fucking nailed it. They're absolutely gorgeous. Well, yes, they can all be used separately. I personally like using all three of them at the same time because it just, I don't know, there's so many options and everything just works so beautifully together. So yes, while each one is different, I love being able to mix and match them because I really feel that each color story complements the next. So for this review, I'm actually just gonna talk about them collectively because I didn't notice any issues between the palettes. So let's break it down by finish, starting with the mattes. The mattes are lovely. They're incredibly pigmented. So you don't need to spend time building up opacity. I didn't experience any issues with blending, patchiness, or muddiness. And I was really able to create beautiful gradients between the mattes. In particular, the Red Dragon palette. Oh my god. This red down here, bitch, do not be afraid. <laughs> 
This one just melts so beautifully with all these brown tones. Oh my God, bitch. Like a sunset on my eyes. I love it. I didn't experience any problems with longevity. They all work just so well together. No shade overpowered the next. They were just awesome. Odin's Eye makes really fabulous mattes. So let's move on to the shimmers. Bitch, okay. Bitch. I was raving about the goddamn mattes, but no, no, no. What steals the show is the shimmers. There's just something so beautifully sparkly about Odin's Eye shimmers. Like I can't put my finger on it, but they're just so like, ugh, they're like little jewels. They're absolutely breathtaking. They're the kind of shadows you can use dry and still be impactful. There's like a certain, I don't know, like a metallic wetness to the formula. A real alien slut, if you will. Anyway, so while I can use them dry, I really do love to use them with glitter glue because if you do use them dry, you do get a little bit of fallout. So it is best to kind of go in with a little bit of an adhesive there. It makes things stay into place, but you do get a rogue sparkle here or there, but it's not like full on glitter bukkake. But I will say though that when it's like a darker shimmer and it's not just this formula but i feel like almost any formula really i find that the darker the shimmer usually the more chunky it is sometimes and there can be a little bit of fallout like a little bit more fallout than usual but rest assured you can get rid of it with ease so who the fuck cares bottom line the bitches are pigmented they're the kind of shimmers that you can layer and you're not going to get any sort of like weird wrinkly ball texture or get a weird spicy butthole chemical burn reaction that sometimes shimmers like to do i didn't experience that with these palettes so since i primarily use glitter glue with these shadows. I didn't experience any cracking, any fading, any flaking. Everything looked perfect. So the only difference I would say between, and it's, not, it's actually not a difference at all. So Tina's palette has a couple of metallic shimmers in it. And honestly, I can't tell the difference between metallic and shimmer because like I mentioned, I feel like the shimmers have that metallic wet feel. So if I didn't know from reading the description that it was metallic, I wouldn't be able to tell because I feel like all of their shadows are metallic. So I didn't really notice any difference in the formulas, but in any case, everything worked beautifully. Last but not least, there are three multi-chromes in these palettes, which I think is fucking fantastic. I love being able to see that more brands are actually incorporating multi-chromes in their palettes. That's fucking awesome. Listen, I love me a good shimmer. I love me a good duochrome, but there's nothing better than a fucking multi-chrome. Multi-chromes will save the world, bitch. Now, is this my favorite multi-chrome of all time? No. When I think of multi-chromes, you know, my go-to formulas is pretty much Davina, Leona, MBA Cosmetics, JD Glow, Terra Moons, Notoriously Morbid, they have really beautiful multi-chromes as well. So when I think of multi-chromes, right, those are the kind of formulas that I have in my mind. It's something that you could put on a bare lid and it's just super impactful. That said, I think the formula is incredibly beautiful, but they're a little bit on the thinner side. So I think they kind of look a little bit better over eyeshadow or over like a darker base. But if you do have it on a bare lid, you can see the shift. It's just a little bit opaque. With that said, they operated very much like the shift meaning that when I used glitter glue, I didn't have any sort of reaction or anything like that. Everything stayed into place. The shift, I'm actually wearing one of the multi-chromes on the like middle of my lid today. So I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I know it's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but in person, bitch, I'm stunning. <laughs> I'm so full of myself today. <laughs> what am I not? Whatever. Anyway, so I'm very happy to report that these operated like the shimmer, so I didn't experience any sort of bullshit flaking, caking, whatever. It worked perfectly. So with that said, each palette retails for a whopping $33, like I mentioned earlier. And honestly, Honestly, had I not received this in PR, I would have picked these up and I would have been a happy motherfucking camper because these are awesome. I think in a sea of a highly saturated eyeshadow palette market right now, these bring something to the table because there are different finishes. And for me, that makes them truly unique. Honestly, I cannot pick a favorite. Don't even ask me. I'm a motherfucking Libra bitch. But for today, I actually have the Judy palette on because I don't know, there's something just so beautifully basic about this palette. Oh, I can't. Like, ugh. Mm. It's funny because actually some of the greens too kind of remind me of like the Natasha Denona gold palette, which is currently being discontinued. So there's a, the one shade up here, Solar Flare, kind of reminds me of like Moonwalk from ColourPop or a beautiful gold shade in the Natasha Denona gold palette. It's fucking perfection. But then you have like a Nets palette, which is like pretty much just perfect for the winter. Like when I want to have my dark grungy moment. And then we have Tina's, which is so goddamn fucking colorful and just so beautiful. And I want to look like a beautiful motherfucking hummingbird. Like, I can't pick. Don't make me pick, bitch. <laughs> So rest assured, if you pick up any of their palettes, they're all the same across the board. Choose a color story that tickles your pickle or, you know, be an absolute monster and just get all three. Whatever, who cares? But these are absolutely fabulous. I highly recommend them. And again, congratulations to Annette, Tina, and Judy. Y'all did such a wonderful fucking job and I'm just so excited to keep putting these on my motherfucking face. Moving on to sugar drizzle. Listen, I hate pickles. <laughs> I hate them. I think they're fucking disgusting. However, I am a slut for green. And when this was announced, I lost my motherfucking mind. So this, in my opinion, is the only time pickles are acceptable. 
okay? Get them the fuck off my burger. I only want them on my eyes. So the paint me green and call me a pickle because I'm done dealing with you palette retails for $21.95. By the way, I think that's the longest fucking name in history for an eyeshadow palette. This six pan palette consists of two mattes and four duochromes. I absolutely am obsessed with this color story. For such a small palette, it has a gorgeous range. That said, let's break it down by finish. Let's start with the mattes. In the palette, you get two mattes and they are Dr. Pickles and Tickle My Pickle. The mattes are absolutely fantastic. They're incredibly pigmented, they're blendable, and they have great longevity. The best part is when combined, they do not look muddy, they do not look patchy. And when used together, you do get a really beautiful like dimension on the eyes of like this kind of swampy green moment. It's, it's beautiful. I didn't experience any fallout, creasing, or balding issues. If I was looking to complain about anything, I guess I would like another matte in the palette, but you know, bleh, not the end of the fucking world. And the reason reason for that is because I genuinely enjoyed using the matte formula. But it doesn't matter. Why? Because we got four motherfucking duochromes in this palette. And bitch, they're fabulous. Listen, I love the mattes. I think they're great. But the fucking duochromes is where it's at. So first you have fried pickles, which is a beautiful lime green with a touch of blue. Then you have pickle juice, which almost kind of feels like a multi-chrome in a way because the shift is like from blue to purple to magenta. It's absolutely gorgeous. Then we have dill pickles, oh, bitch, which is a very beautiful pink to gold. And last but not least, we have in a pickle which is a green pink duochrome honestly just ah they're so fucking good i love them when applied with a dry brush you do experience a decent amount of glitter bukkake and while there is payoff when using a dry brush i think adding a bit of saturation or using your finger can make it a little bit more impactful i use glitter adhesive with these shadows and i didn't experience any sort of weird texture issue or spicy butthole or anything like they just look beautiful you're able to layer these shadows together which is great and when using glitter glue the bukkake was contained so that's all Awesome. And I didn't experience any fallout throughout the day. The longevity of these shades is absolutely fantastic. I wore this formula for more than 12 hours on some days and everything just stayed into place. I really love when a formula really upholds for a very long day and this is just, oh, it's just so fucking perfect. And I think for the price point, this is absolutely an amazing palette. There is no surprise how much I love green eyeshadow. I've tried my fair share of green palettes and actually if you're ever interested, I know that I always get the one comment, my quest for green because I did a quest for for yellow video and I know I want to do that I think I'm gonna do that for December because I'm gonna do dead miss yeah I'm saying this right now I'm doing dead miss this year <sighs> we're gonna we're gonna fucking barrel through it and I think that's why I'm saving my quest for green is for dead miss but if you do want to see like my favorite all-time like green palettes let me know down below. I'll be more than happy to do so. But all that to say, this is probably one of my favorite green palettes. And the reason for that is, is because for such a small palette, the range is absolutely fucking stunning. And when I use it, it makes me excited for all the possibilities that I can do when creating eye looks. And the fact that there's so many possibilities from a small color story is like, fucking fantastic. So it actually really makes me interested to want to try more stuff from this brand. On a separate note, they make beautiful multi-chrome eyeliners. And I know I talked about it in my favorites video, but using that palette paired with those eyeliners, oof, bitch, like, mm, mm, mm. <sighs> For me, especially with those multi-chrome eyeliners, I don't use them above the lash line. I actually just use them in my waterline. And while it's not, you know, the most impactful multi-chrome, there is such a beautiful color shift in the waterline. I don't wanna say it's subtle because it's not really subtle. It's different, it's just fucking different. And it sucks because it's so hard to translate on camera, but in person, bitch, I look like I am from another goddamn planet, okay? And I'm in love with it. It's just so, it's so good. Anyway, <laughs> I highly recommend checking out this brand. They are absolutely fucking fabulous and um, yeah, I think they came out with the Halloween palette that I kind of need to fucking try. I need to get that. Anyway, with that said, they're awesome. And now let's move on to Mirror Beauty. Speaking of another fucking great green palette, we have the green palette from Mirror Beauty. Full disclaimer, I am an affiliate with Mirror Beauty. So if you do use the code garbage you can save 10 percent off and yes i do make a small kickback with that said though i did purchase this palette before i became an affiliate i became an affiliate fairly recently anyway so the green palette retails for 21 dollars. it's a nine pan palette that's from the house of avarice collection this palette is described as inspired by concepts of greed and success especially as they relate to the immigrant and or bipoc experience first and foremost the artwork on this palette is fucking fabulous bitch i first of all 
I, <laughs> it's so shallow, it's so shallow, but I really love palettes that just kind of feel like little mini art pieces, and that's what this feels like. And I always can appreciate an indie brand bringing it, because a lot of the big box brands, you know, whatever, they're like, oh, they'll make something cool every so often, but for the most part, if you want to look for something truly fucking unique, you have to look to indie brands, and this is so fucking cool. That said, when you open this little palette up, you do get this little nine pan color story. And you get four mattes, four shimmers, and one duochrome. So let's break it down by finish. Starting with the mattes, they're great. The four mattes in this palette are wonderfully pigmented. And I didn't experience any issues with patchiness, longevity, lifting, or muddiness. Everything was fantastic. The shade DLE, which is called Dr. Lawyer Engineer, is a beautiful mustardy yellow brown shade. Kind of looks like shit, but in the best way possible. <laughs> I love this kind of shade because not only does it look really good in the crease, but like all over the lid kind of gives you this smoky fall moment. I fucking love it. So when I'm feeling my all matte fantasy, this is what I bathe myself in. It sounded weird, but whatever. <laughs> the greed shade, the one in the middle, is also fantastic as well. This is a lime green shade. However, when you start to blend it out, it has a little bit more of like a yellow tone to it. So like a chartreuse kind of a color. So um, it's kind of nice while there is no yellow in the palette when you do blend it out, like it has that little moment to it, making it like a, a Sprite moment. Love that. The shade Greed is a perfect Kelly Green. And then you have the shade Dream Job, which is like a very beautiful turquoise color. My overall experience with the masks are the same. They paired very well together. And I didn't experience any issues. They were absolutely fabulous. My personal favorite was combining Greed and Goals because it kind of gave me this Bog Queen witch moment. And I'm here for it, bitch. It's Halloween after all. <laughs> also, that's like my year round aesthetic. Anyway, actually, I think my favorite look that I created with this palette is like pictured here. I look, okay, I look a little, little wild. All right, I know. Okay, the wig is not helping it, but there's just something just so like fun about this palette. Like, I feel like I had like ectoplasm in the fucking crease. Like I was living my bog queen fantasy. This look made me feel like a powerful fucking bitch. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, moving on to the shimmers. There are four shimmers in this palette. You have Success, which is a very beautiful green gold. Then you have Five to Nine, which is an excellent lime green shimmer. The shade Ambition, which is underneath that, is a very beautiful bronze shade. that kind of has like a, a hint of like a olive greeny gold aspect to it. Very beautiful as well. And then we have the shade First Gen, which has more of like an emerald green moment. Very beautiful. The shimmers were awesome. They're nicely pigmented, but I feel like they work really well with a saturated brush, some glitter glue, or with a finger. Well, yes, there is a bit of glitter bukkake. On the bright side, it's incredibly easy to clean. I didn't experience any flaking or any falling throughout the day. And the longevity was motherfucking solid. And I feel like I said this 75 times today, but I did not experience any texture, any wrinkly ball sack texture, any spicy butthole. Everything was perfect. Now, the last formula in this palette is Asian App, and it's a duo chrome and this one has like a warm red undertone but also has this like really beautiful flip to like a jewel tone green it's such a weirdly unique color okay if think of it this way which i know sounds really fucking ridiculous but if freddy krueger could get like boiled down into an eyeshadow i think that's what it would be i think that's what he would be yeah i'm gonna say that audra from audra at home will co-sign that statement i think she would <laughs> It's so good, but the duochrome operates very much like the shimmer I didn't have an experience. It's just, it's a beautiful fucking shade. What I love about this formula is that it's incredibly easy to use and you can create really gorgeous looks with these. For the price point, I think it's absolutely fabulous. And much like Sugar Drizzle and Odin's Eye, it makes me look forward to future releases from this brand. They're all fucking wonderful. And with that said, that is my fun size review from some really awesome motherfucking indie brands. Let me know down below if you have any of these palettes or if you plan on picking them up, let me know. Or if there are other indie brands you'd like to see me talk about, let me know because I love hearing from you. And with that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button at three and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon to all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, gross, really gross, really bog witchy garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do it without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. And listen, I just want to gobble you all up. Just get in my belly. Be one with me. It'll be fine. If you want to know what is currently on my face and where to get all these beautiful palettes, everything will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little chipmunks later. Bye.